first of all i want to say i think these are still early days for chennai also and uh, and and we're just hoping that something great is going to come out of chennai but at least the the foundation with which chennai seems to be going forward seems to be pretty solid and that's what i'm going to share today there's nothing on ground yet to show saying this is chennai has become a great city i think mumbai still continues to have historically much better facilities uh, when it comes to walk cycling and uh, public transportation uh, just that chennai is now trying to get head in that direction and itdp the organization that i represent institute for transportation and Pol development policy along with our very close partners chennai city connect foundation have had the uh, good fortune to be able to work with some very enlightened people within the government in Tamil Nadu and Chennai city uh, who are really the ones who are spearheading the work on ground. We are just facilitators and catalysts and I'm just going to show some of the work that these great people in Chennai have started to do. <coughs> Shall I put on the presentation? So Chennai, as you know, is like is the third or the fourth largest city, depending upon how population is measured and how boundaries are drawn. Uh, but it's it's a pretty large city in India. Uh, presently, the metropolitan population is somewhere in the range of around like 95, a little under 10 million, uh, 95 lakhs, 9.5 million. Uh, it has many of the same set of issues which Indian cities are facing. Uh, there is uh, growing more private motor vehicle uh, usage in the city. And over the years, the public transportation really hasn't taken off in the same way. Like, you know, to give you some big numbers, uh, the, the bus service has, has pretty much, you know, remained the same in the last decade or so. There's been some growth, but has pretty much remained the same or so in the last decade or so, there are about three and a half thousand buses. And yet what's crazy is that these three and a half buses carry close to about 50 lakh passengers every day because there still seems to be a demand for public transportation in the city, uh, which isn't properly served, right? So, you know, we're talking about something like 1,300 to 1,400 passenger trips being done by each bus in the city, where the, the average across the world seems to be more in the range of 900 uh, to 1,000. So you're, you're talking about 30% additional, uh, 30 to 40% additional passengers just getting packed into buses. It's pretty common to see 100, 110, 130 passengers in a single 12 meter bus. Uh, there is uh, a substantial usage of shared auto rickshaws and vans because public transportation really doesn't support uh, the, the need. So, you know, of, often we say people are just going to go towards private motorized vehicles, but still, I think many Indian cities are in the place where they want public transportation. There just don't, isn't a sufficient supply for supporting them. There, of course, also are needs to curb the growth of private motor vehicles, but even supply side is a very important side. So, put again, putting numbers in place, uh, there's uh, about there are about 11 lakh trips every day by train, of which around 10 lakhs are by surface rail and about one lakh, a little over one lakh by an elevated rail line which was created about 15 years back called MRTS, which was a grand project. It was done by the Chennai Metropolitan Development Authority and the railways department, Southern Railways together with big hopes, but didn't really take off in the same matter, uh, same way because road-based public transportation still seems to dominate and is preferred by passengers. And therefore you see that they're close to about 20 lakh trips done by shared autos in the city. So twice as much is done by shared autos as by rail in a city which has about 300 kilometers of rail lines. So these are some dramatic numbers for any city. The good thing is uh, Chennai finally created uh, through, through an act uh, a unified metropolitan transport authority and it has all the important people that you seek in uh, in to be there in an authority uh, it's headed by the transport minister the vice chairman is the chief secretary of the government of tamil nadu 
you have all the departments, like close to about 15 odd departments, for, if you put together secretaries, principal secretaries, commissioners, who all are part of the executive sort of board of this agency or members of the authority. Uh, the initial one, one year or so, things did not move much. And ITDP and its uh, partner, City Connect, we really tried to push the agenda, saying, you know, you've got to do something with Kumta, uh, because just having an agency is not enough on paper. You've got to do something on ground. Like, you know, it has to be active. And, and the good news is, starting sometime in uh, 2000, like late 2011, early 2012, things really started, started picking up. You know, there was interest and some key stakeholders within these members that you see started pushing the agenda forward, like the Secretary of Special Initiatives, who also happens to be the MD of Metro Rail, the Municipal Affairs Secretary, who used to be earlier the Housing and Urban Development Secretary, and the Commissioner of the City, uh, present Commissioner of the City, who's who've been taking an active role in the process. And I've... Again, as I said, while there's nothing on the ground to show right now, but if you speak to people, there's a sea change in how they perceive things. You know, you go and ask anybody, the only thing that they're talking about these days is, is how to create better facilities for pedestrians and improving public transportation. Um, I'll talk a little later about it, but just to give a sample, the Corporation of Chennai, which has around 300 main arterial roads called the bus route roads, has announced in its budget this year that it's going to improve the footpaths on all these streets. And, and to show that it's actually doing something, it's taken up 71 of those roads in this year to improve the footpaths. And when I say improve the footpaths, it's not just a cursory thing. They are actually increasing the footpath widths to three and a half meters, four meters, and reducing the carriageways. There's a, there's a clear line which has been drawn inside the corporation saying motor vehicle lanes don't need to be three and a half meters per lane. They have to be 2.75 or less. So let's do that and make sure that we have adequately sized pedestrian paths. So any executive engineer that you speak in the Chennai knows that. The chief engineer within the the corporation, who's actually on lean from the highways department, recently went and fought a war within his, his original department highways saying, we were just doing the wrong thing. The first right on a street in urban areas, and for that matter, any area, is that of a pedestrian. And, and it was really taken well. And, and then uh, the secretary was like, you know, let's, let's appoint sociologists to find out how can we make streets more inclusive. You know, when do you hear a secretary of highways talking about sociologists, right? That's, that's the change that's happened. Uh, the recently, like, you know, it's, it's still not, uh, you know, officially notified or anything, but there's been an agreement at the highest level in the government saying parking needs to be managed to reduce the growth of motor vehicles in the city. You know, this is all the group of secretaries agreeing to do that. Like, that's, that's the level of agreement that's come about saying we cannot just continue as, uh, as normal. So let's look at what, what, what are, what's happening. You know, they're in Kumta now, as of now, they've created three subcommittees which are active and one more which is coming up. And these three some committees actually are non-motorized transport, multimodal integration, and resource mobilization for projects. What does it say? It, it, it's actually very clear. You know, there, there isn't a department of motor vehicle or roads. There's a department of, or, or a subcommittee of, of non-motorized transport. That's the streets vertical within Kumta, which actively looks at everything. So that's the streets or roads vertical, but it's called the non-motorized transport vertical. So there's a change in how you view things. It looks at everything about the street. So it looks at footpaths, and it also looks at, you know, what do you do with a carriageway? It also looks at what do you do about parking on the streets? What do you do about vending on streets? All these components. But just by changing the nomenclature, you have a change in how you start thinking about what it, what's important. And it's under this subcommittee, which under which all this work that I was talking about under, under the corporation is happening, which is to improve the streets, and I'll talk about more projects later on. 
The other subcommittee is the multimodal integration, which is about transit. It's, it's about how do you get all the transport uh, uh, facilities together, how do you get uh, transport departments together to make it an easier, uh, uh, make it easier for passengers, for people who want to use public transportation in the city. So it's not just about facilities design, it's also about communication design. So as we speak, the multimodal integration subcommittee is going forward with uh, a project for uh, defining how do you get information across to passengers of, of all modes so that they have an easier job. Simultaneously, they've taken on a project to improve uh, integ physical integration between buses and rail systems across the entire city. So they're in the process of appointing consultants to redesign facilities, uh, bus stations and, and train terminals, and how do you integrate these together. Uh, the Metro Corporation, uh, one of its big projects outside constructing the Metro itself is foot access to its stations. That's, so they, they, in coordination with the corporation under the non-motorized transport vertical is doing that work. And under its own MMI function is, is looking at how do you integrate also physically with paratransit, with, uh, with buses. Now, you know, in many cities you would say, let's get rid of uh, the auto rickshaws or, you know, let's get rid of these, these vans which are, which are an, an ugly sore or they're creating traffic jams. Instead, what are these guys talking about? When they say multimodal integration, they say they're an integral part. We've got to understand that. We've got to change our regulation which does not allow these small vehicles to work as stage carriages and make them allow, and allow them to now act as stage carriages. So that's what's the push now under the state to change the regulation to facilitate what happens on the ground for the, when it's for the people. Uh, and they're looking at actively integrating these paratransit uh, uh, operators with formal public transportation so there's easy interchange between them rather than saying let's just get rid of, get rid of them. So, and the third one is a resource mobilization which is looking at how do you get money to do these good projects and how do you make sure that there is a, a functional urban transport fund in the in the city, so these are some of the things that are happening, and potentially, like some something that we worked out is what is the role of the Kum, of Kumta itself. You know, often when you create an authority, uh, the fear is amongst other departments that their power is going to be taken away, you know, and that's a real fear. You know that you know because these departments have existed for a very long time, and you know they don't want to necessarily get rid, get uh, uh, give off their jurisdiction, whether it's physical or it's over. Uh, areas of work to someone else. Uh, therefore, we're looking at Kumta more as a facilitating body and empowering individual agencies to take on uh, the job of managing things. For example, the subcommittee, NMT subcommittee or subgroup is under the, is nominally under the Corporation of Chennai because the Corporation of Chennai manages most of, most of the streets. The subcommittee consists of members of all the other departments. So every month when there is a meeting of NMT subcommittee, you have CMDA, the highways, the railways, the electricity board, the water supply guys, and you know every, everybody that's important, the metro, all those departments which I said earlier, people from all those departments and senior folks from those departments uh, are, are present in those meetings to discuss and take top level decisions and take action. It's not just a, you know, let's have tea meeting. It's a, it's an active action-oriented meeting. There's project management scheduling, which is done at those meetings. And it, they last typically for about two hours, and that's what's done. And a month later, we again have a clear agenda of what was discussed last month, what was going to be done, and what's the status, how do we take it forward. Same thing with the other ones as well. So, so in that sense, you know, Kumta can really play a facilitating role, so to speak, the, the entity itself. Uh, for data analysis to help guide the actions of these subgroups, provide planning support, looking at funding and financing so that those projects can happen, uh, integration between agencies, getting some of the pilots off ground, and communications uh, and engagement with people, which are important components which often get forgotten. So in the same, in the, in the same uh, sort of, so to promote this, what ITDP did with 
in collaboration with Kumta earlier this year in January was to organize a two and a half day workshop with all these stakeholders of Kumta. And we also brought uh, a senior uh, uh, officer from Transport for London, the director of strategic uh, planning from Transport for London to, who's been around for almost the entire 12 year period of TFL's existence to facilitate the process. And this was, an, this was a really exciting workshop that happened. Uh, there were a couple of, uh, there were four primary uh, groups which were created to discuss what needs to be done. Each of these groups was headed by one of the principal secretaries or the commissioner of the city. Uh, and, and surprise, surprise, even for us, each one of those senior officers, along with their entire team, like they were around close to 60 people, stayed for the two and a half days to, to guide what the process is going to be. So, you know, you had these secretaries, like they said, okay, for two and a half days, we're going to shut off firefighting mode, which we normally do in our offices, and we're going to focus on what's the future and how do we get this done. So the first day was sort of detailed discussion on what needs to be done, and those groups discussed that. Second day, first half, the staff looked at compiling that material to create a presentation. Second half, there was an present, internal presentation that was done to these officers. And the third day, there was a national level workshop uh, which called, like, close to about 350, 400 people were there from all officers as well as other cities from the state of Tamil Nadu to look at what Chennai is doing. You know, where, does, where is it heading forward? So these are the groups, Kumta as an agent of change, uh, which is looking at the institutional and the funding areas, developing an integrated bus and BRT network because bus-based transportation is so important for the city, improving streets in the public realm, and for last but not the least, managing uh, road space and travel demand. Uh, these were the discussions that happened. Uh, typically a group had about a dozen odd people uh, to discuss uh, the issues in, in depth of what the present status is, what are the regulations, uh, how do we take it from here to wherever we want to be. So look, I was talking about these, this information about Chennai earlier. So over the years, if you see uh, where you had predominantly green modes of transport earlier, which was in 1970s, it's consistently come down to a point uh, where in 2008 where there was a big study which was done, a lot of data available. It went down from being near 100%, so to speak, you know, something like 90, 95% by green modes, to being around uh, 35 or 65%. It's still substantial, but it's, it's a dramatic change that has happened in the last 15 to 20 years in the city. So, Let's look at what changed, and this is not you know, a surprise, but that's what really changed. Walk came down a little bit, cycle came down substantially, bus-based transportation came down really big, and there was a minor increase in rail transportation because of the creation of the, uh, the MRTS line. Auto rickshaws went up, uh, and scooters and motorcycles and cars, those are the ones which really took it in that direction in those years. So now if that needs to be changed, something has to happen. You know, this, this is where we stand as of today, which is around 36% by, uh, not 36%, sorry, 31% uh, by private modes, is uh, private motor vehicle modes, and the remaining, which is about 69% by public transportation modes. And, and one of the big things to see is this, which is substantial amount of service still happening by road-based public transportation in the city. So the goal is marginal increase over the next years, but it's still substantial when it comes to actual numbers. And the state government now has clearly announced its support for the public transportation, where it's set a goal of 70% of all motorized trips by 2023 to be by public transportation in the city. And that's a, that's a laudable goal. So if, if 2023, that's the goal, then 
one needs to at least achieve 60% of uh, trans trips by public transportation by 2018. And these were the numbers which were calculated in, in that workshop that I talked about in January to look at what's the population growth, what are the trip growth rates, how many actual trips are going to happen by then. And we realized that this is what needs to happen, really. You know, it, it needs, public transportation needs to go from the present number of a, a little under 90 lakh trips a, a day to a, around 120 to 123 lakh trips a day. That's a big increase in trips that needs to happen. And simultaneously, one is looking at reduction in private motor vehicle trips from around 70 lakhs as of today to around 60 lakh trips by 2018. So numbers, they might seem small. You're saying 5% reduction in private motor vehicles as a percentage, but in actual numbers, it's pretty phenomenal. You know, it, it's because there is population growth and trips increase that happen. We're talking about a, close to about 15% reduction in, actually, in actual number of trips that happen in the city. So some action needs to be taken for this. They need to increase the total number of buses from the present number of around three and a half thousand to around seven thousand. So this was this is the first time somebody thought about this, saying, "What does this mean in real numbers on ground?" You know, and and these were not done by some consultant who gave a report. These were done by themselves. You know, the officer sitting down and saying, "Okay, this is our goal. These are we know basic mathematics, and this is what basic mathematics tells us that that's where that's where we need to head." And which means that by 2013, we actually need to have a large number of that, that increase in bus fleet to happen right away, to, from around 3,500 to around 5,000 buses. Uh, developing an integrated BRT network. Uh, under the Kumta itself, uh, ITDP created a bus rapid transit uh, study. And this, this study identified various corridors in the city. And this has been. Uh, actually approved by the Kumta executive body under the chairmanship of the chief secretary. Uh, it's, it's still taking time to resolve some of the sort of institutional issues and how to go forward, but, but it's got an approval, right? You know, there's no, there's no dilly-dallying about the fact that they, the city requires bus rapid transit. And look at the improving uh, street uh, and public realm. These were sort of various agreements that came about amongst these officers who sat and saying that we need to have uniform street design guidelines, identify major cycling movements to have a non-motorized transport master plan in the city, uh, adopt the design standards and start implementing the stuff on ground and ensure seamless connectivity between bus and rail systems. Uh, these are some of the, the outputs of that workshop. Maybe I'll just skip this quickly. I, I can give you the presentation, but I wanted to get to some of the actual stuff. So looking at the street design guidelines, what's important? Footpaths are important. And on small streets, the streets need to be just slower for them to be safe. And, and then and about uh, parking. These, these things were all, sorry. These were all the issues that were discussed, which is to have an inventory of existing parking supply uh, and, and what's happening uh, with that, where is it, whether it's paid, unpaid, what's happening with, like how are people using it, mapping it on the streets, uh, and start looking at a financial model and an SPV. And this was done in January, and the good news is the Corporation of Chennai is already in the process of creating the SPV to start parking management in the city. Uh, under the AGs of Kumta, because the Kumta, Kumta executive body approved uh, park this direction of thought of how parking needs to be managed, that parking needs to be performance-based and the fee needs to increase based on demand rather than just increasing the supply, uh, that this needs to be managed using uh, modern technology rather than letting money leak through various formats in the process. Uh, so that's, that's a great news that's happening on that front. And and, and there were visions of how the streets need to be, and this is already under construction now. So they're, they're creating these larger footpaths in Chennai, reducing uh, the width of carriageway wherever they are. And in some places, you know, while this one might be slightly, sorry, this one might be slightly larger, uh, 
in, in some places, there's just two lanes of 2.75 meters each, and in some locations, it's just one lane of 3.5 meters, and that's it. That's what's left after creating a properly sized footpath, and the corporation's just fine with it. And, and the corporation also, whatever came through this workshop, which is joint in nature, identified that they wanted to create uh, bicycle tracks in the city, and the first of those should be that, that, that it should be along the beach, uh, providing easy connectivity, almost like a, a, a cycling highway of sorts, which connects each of these areas within the core city. And the corporation's already going ahead. It's appointed the consultants, got them the designs, and next month it's going to tender out construction for the cycle track, uh, the first of the pilots in the city. Yes. How long is this uh, beach? Uh, the, the beach is pretty long. In the first phase, they're building 7.1 kilometers of cycle tracks, and later on, then they will build all these interior streets, which are either dedicated cycle tracks or traffic calming to ensure that cyclists can reach safely. And in addition, the city is looking at cycle sharing. Uh, the expression of interest is going to come out within the next uh, two weeks. It's already been approved internally at the corporation and to create a large cycle sharing system in covering the entire core city, uh, which is densely packed, uh, creating cycle uh, stations, which are 300 meters apart, so they're really accessible for people. And it's gonna be a pretty large system because we, essentially they're gonna have around 158 stations with 3,000 odd bicycles in the system. So it's not a tiny experiment with 50 cycles or 15 cycles somewhere. It's, it's talking about really a system for the city. And this is, this is the pilot, right? So they're not talking about a 50 cycle pilot, they're talking about a 3,000 cycle pilot which might be expanded later on uh, to other areas in the city or expansion within this area. And, and so there's simultaneous rollout of many things that are happening, right? So managing parking, ensuring that some of those areas which are presently being used by private motor vehicles to park become cycle stations. Improving the footpaths to ensure that people can come to public transportation and that they can come to the cycle sharing stations. Improving streets so they can reach the cycle highway, uh, which is being the pilot which is being uh, created right now. 71 streets, which I talked about earlier, which is happening in this year, this financial year, for the improvement. And eventually, over the next three years, all the 330 arterial streets in the city. 65 kilometers of arterials which are under the highways department, which, which also happen to be co-aligned with the metro rail, are also being redesigned to ensure that there is the, there are better facilities for pedestrians and cyclists, uh, and ensuring that there's intermodal interchange. So looking at bus stations, where they should be located, and how do they connect with the metro rail stations to get good connectivity. Some of these things are something which maybe, you know, Bombay just takes it for granted or have happen in a, in a different era where you do see good integration between buses and trains. But for Chennai, which did not have that, it's a dramatic change. And that change in attitude of where we need to go, I think, is the biggest change because you have that right, you have your, your goal set right, then you will take action in the right direction. We also uh, uh, got the officers to be excited to go on walks. So that's, that's the commissioner of Chennai, who's also a principal secretary, the principal secretary of special initiatives of municipal administration and all these people who went just as commoners on a multimodal trip. So they walked, they got to train stations, they stood in lines to buy tickets. They found that after buying the ticket, you couldn't reach the platform properly. So they had to go out again and climb up the stairs and reach the platform and get out and they couldn't find a bus and there was no information about the bus. They had to walk, went in the wrong direction, then came back in the right direction, <laughs> got the bus, then got into a shared auto rickshaw. So it was like a six hour, uh, eventually it turned out to be a, a walk. And that really opened up by saying, you know, wow, if that's the mess people deal with, we gotta do something about it. So immediately they've started a process of looking at multimodal integration. And how do we get, improve these facilities for people? You know, to make sure that they, they get better facilities. And now it's going to be a series where every few months they will go out on the streets to experience it for themselves and look at a different area and make sure that, it, that things improve on ground. And, and that, that really can be a great thing, you know, so I would really encourage you to uh, get some officials just on a weekend, like, you know, let's, let's go on Saturday afternoon walk. And, 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 you know, have fun on, on the streets of how things are. And, and some longer term things like 
creating like the city has a development plan, but the development plan is like a 50,000 meter, you know, the 50 kilometer height vision of whatever the city is, but it's not really looking at the mic, the granular level of what needs to be done. And so now they're, they're really looking at the cooperation in the, and in coordination with Metro Rail because Metro is being created to ensure that some of those hubs become uh, really transit oriented is looking at the process of creating de detailed development plans for those areas and uh, metro rail which is also the the subgroup which manages multimodal integration is now pushing for a fourth department so to speak or subgroup of transit oriented development so there will be as of now there are three non motorized transportation multimodal integration and resource mobilization so the fourth one's going to be transit oriented development to look at how do you ensure that even development regulations change and you facilitate creating uh, transit oriented facilities uh, infrastructure around mass rapid transit in the city and last but not the least this this is uh, a picture of one of the main retail streets in the city called uh, Tyagaraja Road. Uh, some of you might know it as Pondi Bazaar Road. Uh, and the corporation has really taken on the idea of creating pedestrian-only zones. So you see this, but that's what's going to be in the next couple of months. Uh, the, the conceptual designs are already done. Uh, the detailed design uh, architect and engineers have been appointed. and the construction should start sometime in October of changing it. And it's not just corporations' own sort of brainchild. They really made sure that this was participative. We had multiple meetings on ground with local shopkeepers and vendors and people and got their support. The corporation was the one which managed this and got their support, and only then are they taking this project forward. Uh, and there are two more to come in, in this financial year, uh, one near the Mylapur Temple and one more in another area of the city, which connects to the beach. So creating better facilities for people, managing parking in a better way fashion, creating cycle tracks, creating cycle sharing, better multimodal facilities, creating pedestrian-only zones, looking at multimodal integration from a physical perspective, from an information perspective, and making sure that they have more buses. So this year, they, the city is going to get some 800 new buses. So they're not getting all the 1,500 buses, but they have. They are getting 800 new buses for its passengers. Uh, so that's a substantial increase from the number that there is. So these are some of the good things that have come about because of some dynamic leadership, uh, because there are some institutions which have been created, and some uh, some systems of coordination that have been created. More than even institutions, I think it's the system of coordination which is really the, the, the important aspect that we're talking about here. Thank you.